Hello everyone, my name is Bryce. I'm a first year PhD student at the Terahertz Engineering Laboratory at the University of Adelaide in South Australia. Uh, today on behalf of my colleagues, Harry, Daniel and Witherwatt, I'll be presenting a broadband and efficient terahertz beam scanning system using a 3D printed Risley prism. All right. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about the motivation behind the project, uh, discuss some approaches available for terahertz beam steering, a bit on their strengths and weaknesses. After that, I'll go through a little bit more about our device in more detail, show you some experimental results, and then cap it off with some of the further work that we have planned. As you all probably already know, lots of people want to use terahertz for lots of stuff. Practically all free space communication, imaging, ranging applications require some type of beam forming, which for the purposes of this presentation, we will loosely define as manipulating the shape and or direction of a beam. Beam forming has been identified as one of the key research areas necessary for the, the widespread adoption of terahertz technology. So we hope to contribute a tool that's useful over a wide range of applications, hence the inclusion of broadband in the title. Broadly speaking, there are three main ways to implement adjustable beamforming for terahertz. First, we have leaky wave antennas, which spatially map frequency. This inherently limits their operation for broadband applications, so they're not of really all that much interest to this project. Uh, next is the phased array, which has been seeing some good improvements up at terahertz frequencies over the last few years or so. Uh, in general, the broadband application of, well, broadband operation of phased arrays tends to attract fairly high levels of cost and increased complexity, uh, which is something we wanted to avoid in this project. And then last but not least is reconfigurable optics. There's a lot of unique and interesting designs which achieve high bandwidth operation. So just as an example, the group on the right here was able to steer a beam uh, over 150 to 900 gigahertz using uh, this programmable diffraction grading. But in general, a lot of the reconfigurable optics devices tend to suffer from quite high dielectric losses just because of the high frequency they were operating at. Just a couple more examples of reconfigurable optics, mainly just to highlight the, the range of design freedom that we can have in this sort of design domain. On the left is a dielectric free Lindbergh lens, uh, which works by tilting parallel plate, parallel conducting plates to achieve uh, the beam deflection. And then on the right is a more conventional lens shape, which you can adjust focus by injecting and draining off uh, an oil, which is transparent at terahertz. Another common beam steering device that has been used in RF for things like satellite alignment and up in the optical domain for vision alignment and laser scanning is the Risley prism. So for those of you that may be unaware or unfamiliar with the concept, uh, a Risley prism is simply a pair of two identical dielectric wedges uh, with an incline angle alpha. So each wedge introduces a deflection to the incident beam and then by rotating the wedges around the optical axis, you can achieve scanning with two degrees of freedom uh, inside of a cone that's limited by the two phi naught. The appeal of the Risley prism is that it's frequency insensitive, assuming you've got a low dispersion material, as it's just refracting a beam through a few angled surfaces. So in theory, designing something like this should be fairly straightforward for broadband operation. However, the challenge with implementing a Risley prism for Derrotts is primarily dielectric losses. So one group managed to overcome this challenge using the underlying concept of a Risley prism scanner to 3D print a vessel beam launcher. Pictured on the right is one of the two lenses that are in their scanning system. So the high dielectric loss of the material they used to print their device meant the design needed to incorporate phase wrapping in order to reduce the thickness. Uh, which 
at the same time does improve the compactness, but uh, in this case, the phase wrapping limits the operating frequency to just 300 gigahertz. So this device only works in narrow band. So our challenge was finding a way to implement a non-phase wrapped Risley prism, so just regular, uh, while keeping loss down in order to keep our broadband design principle. Fortunately, uh, cyclic olefin copolymer, or COC, is uh, an easily 3D printable filament that has low dispersion and low loss at terahertz frequencies, as you can see in the graph on the right. It's essentially like glass for terahertz, which is great for designing optical components, which is exactly what we're trying to do. The authors of the paper cited on the right went through a great deal of effort in fine-tuning the printing parameters for CSC to get good results, so a quick thank you to them. Uh, moving on, so we 3D printed two wedges with inclined angles of 10 degrees out of CSC and place them in a motorized holder that we built, uh, shown in the photo on the left. So each wedge is held in a 3D printed worm wheel constrained by three rollers. And then we've got two stepper motors coupled to worm gears at the bottom, uh, which rotate the wedges independently around the optical axis, which you can see in this short video here. So because Risley prisms have been used in optics for quite some time already, the control theory is already pretty well documented. The paper cited here details the inverse solutions required for our scanning system, and I've just recreated some plots to match our design. So for any given azimuth and elevation angle, we can solve for the position of each wedge. So for example, if we want the beam to point in the direction marked by the X, uh, the wedges just needed to be rotated to the position which is marked on the color bar. Uh, it is also worth mentioning that the Risley prism can't point directly down the bore site, uh, which is just a limitation of the optical geometry. So there's a small region in the center of the scanning area that's, for our purposes, a few millimeters in diameter that we can't point the beam down. So this can be solved by adding a third wedge, which is something that we're looking at doing in the future. All right, so to confirm the Risley prism deflects the beam as we expect, we measure the radiation pattern. The prism is fed with a 14 millimeter diameter Gaussian beam, and the whole setup is placed on a rotating stage, which is then rotated plus or minus 35 degrees, taking a transmission measurement every degree. Uh, the far field distance for the 80 millimeter aperture is about 14 meters, which exceeds the measurement capabilities of our lab, so about half a meter was the best that we could do. On the left is the Risley prism configured at the zero position with measurements taken, or measurements shown at 220, 275 and 330 gigahertz. Uh, on the right, the Risley prism is configured for its maximum deflection, and then the dotted line on the plot shows the calculated maximum 10.8 degrees uh, just from Snell's law, which matches up quite nicely with the 10.5 degrees that we've measured uh, across our entire frequency range. So the patterns are almost identical across each frequency, which indicates good broadband performance. Next, to measure the transmission efficiency, the prism is configured to be in zero position with the same 40 millimeter Gaussian feed. Uh, two raster scans of the Gaussian beam are taken with the motorized stage that you can see in the photo, uh, both with and without the Risley prism in the optical path. Uh, we use a probe tip here just to capture S21 measurements every one millimeters in the X and Y direction. On the left are two scans. So one of just the input Gaussian beam, which is our reference, and the other with the prism in the path of the beam. So for both scans, uh, the S21 measurement is integrated over two dimensions at each frequency point, and then the efficiency is computed as a, a ratio of the two. As you can see from the plot on the right, the efficiency is about 80% or minus one dB over the entire frequency range, again, indicating good broadband performance. So it is worth mentioning uh, that this curve has been smoothed a bit just for display purposes. 
Uh, this is just a bit of a demo reel for a near field imaging application. So we placed uh, a 3D printed Axicon lens uh, behind the Risley prism and then took some raster scans just to demonstrate the, the beam steering capabilities. So here you can see the bezel beam produced by the Axicon being steered around the frame in a few different positions. Uh, at some point in the future, we're planning to use this setup for some non-destructive evaluation projects. Uh, that's a little bit out of the scope of this presentation, so we'll just leave it at that. Uh, at the moment, we're mainly working on improving our COC printing process. Uh, the photo on the left is another wedge being printed, which is more optically transparent than the other two wedges that I showed earlier, which indicates that there's less air trapped in the COC. So we haven't tested that one yet, but we expect the transmission efficiency to be slightly higher. Uh, we're also looking at how we can control the refractive index of our components by adjusting the infield density of the parts, um, which should hopefully allow us to create more complex designs. So in summary, just using a low loss material, we're able to 3D print a digital prism for use as a broadband and efficient beam scanner capable of introducing a maximum 10.5 degrees of deflection. Uh, lastly, I'd like to thank the Australian Research, Australian Research Council and the Australian Government uh, for, for supporting both myself and the project. Thank you for your attention.